amongst the thousands of products made from hemp, one of the most extraordinary is Henry Ford's plastic car. Built in 1941, it contained cellulose fibers derived from hemp, sisal, and wheat straw. The plastic was lighter than steel, yet could withstand 10 times the impact without denting. Ford must have been very excited to finally unveil his hemp Model T to the world. So what did he do to promote it? There's a famous photo of Henry Ford where he actually takes the blunt end of an axe, he put a little rubber uh, tip on it, and actually pounds onto the back of a Ford Model T that was made from hemp. To show its, its great strength. Oh, absolutely. In fact, we happen to have this car panel here. Right. It's probably the closest approximation to what he used. And so this is hemp and other materials. Hemp and plastic. If you like, why don't you take this uh, rubber mallet, these goggles, go ahead and give it a shot. I can work out my frustration. Nothing. Wow, absolutely nothing at all. It really does work. But we also know that Henry Ford was rumored to have uh, used a sledgehammer, and I want to try that next. Sure. is absolutely not dented at all. Strong stuff. Yeah. I wish my car today would be as strong as this one. So over 80 years ago, Henry Ford was really onto something. Well, something old is new again. A new electric car made of hemp is being developed by a group of Canadian companies working in conjunction with the Canadian government. The Kestrel will be prototyped and tested this fall by Calgary-based Motive Industries Incorporated, a high-tech auto manufacturer. Now, this compact car, which seats four, will have a top speed of 90 kilometers or about 56 miles an hour and a range of up to 100 miles before needing to be recharged. The car's body will be made of an impact-resistant composite material produced from mats of, you guessed it, hemp. The hemp is also being grown in Canada. Now, Henry Ford was the first to build a car made of hemp fiber and resin back in the 1930s. That was more than half a century ago, but the idea wasn't developed much further as cannabis prohibition went into effect in 1937 and car manufacturers favored other materials such as steel. But in the last 25 years, Fiberglass and carbon fiber based composites have gained popularity as materials for automobiles because they are strong and lighter weight. But producing composites from glass or carbon requires intense heat and multiple chemical processes, making them very energy intensive. In contrast, plant based fibers like hemp is grown in a field using only the energy of the sun. As a structural material, hemp is about twice the strength of other plant fibers. It doesn't require much water or pesticide, and it also produces a high yield and grows well in Canada. Nathan Armstrong, president of Motive Industries Incorporated, adds, and I quote, It's illegal to grow cannabis in the U.S., so it actually gives Canada a bit of a market advantage, end quote. The U.S. does, however, allow the import of processed hemp. Cannabis is the strongest natural fiber. It was used for rope, parachutes, a replacement for steel, and even the word canvas comes from the word cannabis. It easily grows everywhere and is actually used to reclaim land once abandoned. It grows in poor soil conditions and can grow more crops and yield more plant matter than most other crops out there. In 1619, the King of England ordered farmers in the American colonies that they quote, must grow cannabis and even allowed people to pay their taxes in cannabis. George Washington grew cannabis, and even the Declaration of Independence was written on it. By 1850, there were over 8,000 plantations of 2,000 acres or more that grew cannabis. Cannabis was so prevalent that it was actually pictured on the 1914 $10 Federal Reserve note that showed the wealth of our nation in manufacturing and agriculture, specifically the cannabis harvest featured on the left. With the abolition of slavery in 1865, 
there was not really an economical way of processing cannabis. Until 1935, when the decorticator made cannabis extremely economical, and it was named the next billion dollar crop by popular mechanics, since it can be used in 25,000 products from dynamite to cellophane. In fact, if you look at all the uses of cannabis, it's not so much a crop as it is an industry. With the new uses and devalued dollar of today, cannabis would not be a billion dollar crop. I believe it would be a trillion dollar industry. The most basic reason why cannabis is illegal is simple economics. What would the effect of cannabis being legalized to the paper, corn, cotton, alcohol, tobacco, prescription drug, prison, and even banking industries? How many of the 45 million Americans hooked on powerful antidepressants that have been known to cause homicidal and suicidal psychotic breaks would be better off smoking cannabis? How many less prisoners, prisons, police, court, drug raids, seizures would there be if cannabis was made legal? How much money would the medical industrial complex lose if people knew that cannabis cured cancer, like in this recent Harvard study? How much money and power would flow out of the money centers if nature was made legal? The person perhaps most responsible for making cannabis illegal is William Randolph Hearst. You know that billionaire megalomaniac propagandist warmonger that is depicted in Citizen Kane pining over a childhood toy in his deathbed after wasting his entire life pursuing power over others. Most delightful in Cuba, stop. Could send you prose poems about scenery, but don't feel right spending your money. Stop. There is no war in Cuba. Signed, Wheeler. Any answer? Yes, dear Wheeler, you provide the prose poems. I'll provide the war. That's <laughs> fine, Mr. When he was not starting the Spanish-American War for American imperialism with his yellow journalism, he was the chief propagandist against cannabis because now with the decorticator in 1935, cannabis became a huge threat to the millions he had invested in the timber industry. After all, cannabis can yield much more paper in less time and impact than logging. He set about to make a new drug called marijuana illegal because if he called it cannabis, people would have thought he was crazy since it was so prevalent in everyone's world. William Randolph Hearst printed racist stories about blacks and Hispanics raping white women and soon after Reefer Madness was released in 1936 showing people having psychotic and murderous breaks but at a terrible price debauchery, violence, murder, suicide and the ultimate end of the marijuana addict hopeless insanity It is too late. Cannabis is so versatile that Henry Ford actually made a car out of hemp fiber that was lighter than steel and 10 times as strong. Here's a video of a man using an axe on the hemp car to demonstrate how strong it is. The magic ingredient is hemp. It's in the body panels, it's in the rear spoiler, and it's also been used in the manufacture of the seats. Take a look at the exterior of the house. This is hempcrete. It's a mixture of hemp, lime, and water. Henry Ford not only used hemp fiber to build the car, he even used hemp oil to fuel it. In fact, Rudolf Diesel, who invented the diesel engine, originally used hemp oil to power his car. Meanwhile, John D. Rockefeller was dumping gasoline into the Cuyahoga River because he had no use for gasoline, and it caused the river to burn. John D. Rockefeller immediately moved to have the gasoline engine become the standard of the auto industry because it served his industry over the farmers that would have benefited from the industrial use of hemp oil. Prohibition of alcohol lasted from 1919 to 1933. The federal government used it as a way to push its federal power on the states and created this huge bureaucracy to fight alcohol. When alcohol was made legal again, the government shifted to narcotics, and the number one on that list was cannabis, which accounts for over 80% of the, quote, illicit drug use. Harry Anslinger was the head of the newly created Division of the Treasury Department called the Federal Bureau of Narcotics. He declared on this new drug called marijuana saying, quote, Reefer makes the darkies think they're as good as white men. Marijuana leads to pacifism and communist brainwashing. You smoke a joint and you're likely to kill your brother. Marijuana is the most violent causing drug in the history of mankind. So between racism and the false belief that it will make blacks pacified communist murderers, the marijuana tax passed in 1937 
with little or no debate, and most congressmen didn't even know cannabis was included in this, since they called it marijuana. By making easily grown cannabis illegal, it also gave support to the centralized drug trade that the Anglo-American Empire runs, going all the way back to the British East Indian Company, the Opium Wars, and even today with Dick Grasso trying to get the FARC and Columbia to invest in the stock market, and HSBC laundering drug money even today. Things that cannot go on forever won't. After spending trillions of dollars over the next few decades on a failed drug war, we now have more prisoners in the prison industrial complex of America than Stalin ever had in his gulags.